How are we doing, folks? Well, um, today I want to uh, take the opportunity to discuss with you something which um, I've been seeing far too much of in classic car circles of late, and that is um, fires. And um, unfortunately, they're all too prevalent, especially with air-cooled uh, VWs and that as well, too. And to be honest with you, so many of them are avoidable. And the big issue is to do with fuel safety. And I am uh, I, I, I'm an aircraft maintenance engineer, okay? I know all about fuel, uh, fuel safety, okay? I've done countless courses on it and that as well, too, okay? And um, I also take it very, very seriously. It's kind of a... Um, Part of the uh, part of the job. Now, one of the big things that's causing um, massive problems with um, fuel systems in uh, classic cars, particularly, is the amount of ethanol in uh, modern fuel, modern petrol, uh, gasoline for you in America. Um, and um, the fact of the matter is, uh, ethanol is corrosive. It uh, absorbs water. It can dissolve varnishes that are already in the fuel system and it damages rubber components, okay? Now, all of that spells disaster for an aging fuel system, okay? So, what you need to do is you need to make sure that the um, fuel system is in tip-top condition and well-maintained. Anything less is just not acceptable and to be honest with you, I'm just uh, counting, I, I'm, I, I just consider it fortunate that I haven't heard of any um, any deaths recently to do with people uh, caught in fires and classic cars and I don't want to hear about any to be honest with you, it's, it's a horrific thing for you to think about. Um, most of this uh, relates to uh, fuel safety in petrol cars, gas cars, but um, it can relate to uh, diesel vehicles as well too. Fuel tank safety is fuel tank safety, uh, fuel system safety is fuel system safety, okay? So you need to take it seriously regardless of the fuel, fuel you're using. All fuels are flammable to some degree or another, okay? And you don't want to test the flammability of them really, except, except inside the engine where the flame is supposed to be. Okay, so starting with fuel, uh, fuel lines, okay? There is a massive, massive problem with quality control to do with fuel uh, fuel pipes that are available to purchase on the internet and uh, over the counter even. Um, there are pipes out there that are listed as OR9 rated. Now OR9, OR9 means that it is, it is uh, suitable for use with ethanol based fuels, okay, or uh, fuels containing ethanol. Um, and any fuel pipe that you buy must be OR9 rated, but there is fuel pipe available on the market which says it's OR9 rated and it's just not and it just d it disintegrates or dissolves when it's uh, when it's presented with ethanol in any way shape or form and um, a lot of this is unfortunately is from unscrupulous sellers on the internet and um, maybe motor factors that don't know uh, what the quality of the product that they're selling is um, and to be honest with you it's not good enough but what you need to do is you need to make sure that where you're buying your fuel line is a reputable seller, that they know the product that they have, they know it's or 9 rated, and that it's a reputable brand. I personally would recommend Gates as a uh, as a brand uh, for a fuel line. Now, um, the other thing as well too is uh, don't use any of that externally braided stuff because you need to be able to inspect your fuel lines. And I've seen fuel lines that have um, have looked entirely serviceable on the outside and you take them off the, um, uh, the pipe union and inside they're just uh, perished to bits. Uh, and the braiding covers all that so you can't see it so you need to you need to be able to inspect them regularly and you must inspect them regularly um so uh, in addition to that as well too you need to use the proper hose clips a lot of people use jubilee clips um, and jubilee clips aren't the correct hose clips okay the correct hose clips are a type of banded clip which have a a sort of a bolt and a square nut that goes on the other side and um, they spread the load evenly across the pipe and um, they're a much better job and um, they will uh, they will keep the pipe more secure um, they're the ones you should be using not uh, not jubilee clips um, the other thing as well too then is um, if you need to use a reducer for a, um, a pipe uh, to go from a larger pipe down to a smaller diameter or vice versa uh, use decent quality reducers uh, brass fittings are the best um, and again with the correct hose clamps um, and um, then if you're using uh, fuel filters, make sure they are away from any hot areas. Uh, up close to the fuel tank is best, um, under the fuel tank, away from sources of ignition. Um, don't put them in the engine bay, okay? There's sources of ignition in there, there's sparks. Some of the um, uh, fuel filters are of questionable quality. 
uh, the type of fuel filter I tend to use is actually the ones from fuel injected engines, which are a metal canister. Now, granted, you can't see inside them, but you're supposed to change them every to every so often anyway. I mean, and if you're letting the fuel filter get that dirty, or it's getting that dirty, there's another problem in your fuel system which you also need to address. Okay, so um, yeah, that's personally what I have. I have the fuel injected, uh, the, the, the fuel injection type filter. They're slightly bigger. They're metal canister, and I find them a lot more durable and um, safe to use. Um, the uh, yeah, so the, so then the, the, this brings me on to using the correct diameter of hose. The amount of times I've seen people stuffing a hose that's too small onto a pipe union and um, stretching it, you're asking for trouble. Same with the opposite. If the opposite is true, is you use a hose that's too big, and it um, and you're tightening it down with the jubilee clip, and this is one of these things that I see so often. No. Just get the right diameter hose. Get a vernier, uh, vernier caliper. Stick it on the pipe union. Find out what size hose you actually, or yeah, what size hose you actually need. Buy that hose. And if you need to go to a different size, use a reducer. Don't just try and clamp down on it on the other end or um, try and bodge it. You, you, there's no room for bodgery when it comes to fuel systems. Okay. Um. There's a uh, now the final big thing, and this is the big thing. Okay, if you have a classic car and you don't have a fire extinguisher in your classic car, you're an idiot. Okay, end of story. There's no two ways about it. And I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna pull any punches on this one. Okay, you need to have some sort of a fire extinguisher. Okay, and I'm not talking about one of these twenty year old things that's gone all rusty and has never been looked at, has never been used. Because by the time it actually ever comes that you need it, it's not gonna work. Okay, and you are going to, at the very least, lose your classic car. Or worst case scenario, lose your life or the life of a loved one. And it's just not worth taking the chance. Get a decent fire extinguisher. Go and buy one of the commercially available ones. And don't buy one of those Mickey Mouse little things. It's like this, like a can of um, a, a can of uh, underarm spray or something like that. Buy a decent size one, you know. And um, in addition to that as well too, what you need to do is you need to, if, especially if it's a powder one, take it out and shake it every so often because what happens is the powder cakes up inside in the fire extinguisher and um, the propellant will sit on top and all you'll get out of it is a lot of propellant and a little bit of powder it's no use whatsoever so you need to shake it and you need to get the powder freed up um, and you need to inspect it regularly and make sure that the pressure gauge is in the green and that as well too don't try it out because if you try it out it's a, they're a one use only operation okay if you've tried it out it's gone it's dead done for okay if you're in any way in any doubt about the fire extinguisher condition, get rid of it, get a new one. Um, and uh, you can also buy installed fire extinguishers as well too, like as in ones that have a um, frangible pipe that uh, will um, will burst if uh, if um, flame comes in contact with it and douse the area in a um, in whatever type of uh, extinguishing media is in the, the bottle. Uh, but um, in addition to that, I would still carry a handheld one as well too. So you, it, like, cause let's say for example, the fire isn't in your engine bay, maybe you have an electrical fire somewhere else for argument's sake. Um, you still need to be able to tackle that as well too. Um, so yeah, look at, a lot of it is common sense folks, but you know, you have to take it seriously, you know. I mean, it, your life might, your life may well depend on it. And um, to be honest with you, shame on any suppliers who are supplying this crap quality fuel pipe out there. I mean, it has to stop, and there has to be better quality control out there for the um, for the, the the type of shite that's available on the internet. Okay, I can accept there's certain things out there that you can take a take a chance with as far as quality is concerned. Not when it comes to people's lives, you know. Decent quality fuel lines, please. Decent quality fittings, decent quality hoses. Inspect it regularly. Carry a fire extinguisher, okay? And you will be you will be much better off, and you'll be happy in the knowledge that um, if anything uh, if anything did ever uh, come a cropper, you've done the um, you've done the best you can to prevent it. So um, look, thanks for watching, and um, safe and happy motoring out there, everybody, folks.